Welcome back on this Monday. Glad you are joining us as we continue our study on the book of 1 Corinthians. We are starting with chapter 2, verse 6. A reminder that for the most part in chapter 1, after the introductory material, he starts talking about the wisdom of God versus the wisdom of man. Uh, let's pick up with verse 6. Yet among the mature... We do impart wisdom, although it is not a wisdom of this age or of the rulers of this age who are doomed to pass away. But we impart a secret and hidden wisdom of God, which God decreed before the ages for our glory. None of the rulers of this age understood this, for if they had, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written... What no eye has seen, nor ear heard, nor the heart of man imagined what God has prepared for those who love him. These things God has revealed to us through the Spirit, for the Spirit searches everything, even the depths of God. For who knows a person's thought except the Spirit of that person, which is in him? So also, no one comprehends the thought of God except the Spirit of God. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, that we might understand the things freely given us by God. And we impart this in words not taught by human wisdom, but taught by the spirit, interpreting spiritual truths for those who are spiritual. Now, as we look at this, uh, the Apostle Paul is saying wisdom is important, but not the wisdom of the world. Instead, the wisdom of God, the secret and hidden wisdom. It is secret and hidden from the world. And why would it be hidden from the world? Because the, the world cannot understand, cannot comprehend it. And what is this secret and hidden wisdom of God? In its faith. It's trusting the unseen, believing the, the unbelievable. It is following the will, the, the guidance of the Spirit. It's a Spirit that leads us into faith, that helps us to see and know and believe and trust in Jesus as our Savior, as the one who forgives. He is the one that helps us to understand the things of God. The world does not understand because the world does not have the Spirit. The Spirit guides Paul also. He looks at this as he teaches. Um, he, he guides Paul's words to help uh, un people understand the spiritual aspect and the spiritual things of God. It's not human wisdom. It's God's great and, and, and mysterious wisdom that we trust. We believe in God. Why? Because of the Spirit's work in us. So he is, in a way, introducing the Spirit and the Spirit's work in this passage. Let's continue with verses uh, 14 through 16. The natural person does not accept the things of the Spirit of God, for they are folly to him, and he is not able to understand them because they are spiritually discerned. The spiritual person judges all things, but he himself to be judged by no one. Uh, for who has understood the mind of the Lord at, so as to instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. Here he contrasts the, the natural person, the worldly person, you might say, with the spiritual person. The natural person does not accept the things of God. They cannot comprehend them. They seem like foolishness. God's giving up his son to die on the cross for someone else seems like foolishness. They are unable to understand them because they are spiritually discerned because they do not have the Holy Spirit. The spiritual person, it says, judges all things, not people, not their right or wrong, but judges all things as far as what is right and what is wrong, because we have the Spirit living within us. We have the mind of Christ. 
Come back tomorrow and we will continue with chapter three. We'll see you then. God bless.